Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Hunky Vape. I'm your host, DJ Alex, and today I'm going to present you with an article I got in my email. It's the morning newsletter from the New York Times, and let me jump to the chase, okay? The first article in the newsletter concludes by the author saying that he is grateful to the study for doing to journalists what they normally do to others. Hold up a mirror to their work and give journalists a chance to do better. Well, after reading this article, I want the U.S. media to do better or account for the 18,928 smoking-related deaths in the U.S. every year that are now attributed to them. Or maybe they can account for the 320,000 lives attributed to their fear-mongering negative bias towards tobacco harm reduction. Ain't nothing to it but to get into it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this right here before us is the article from the New York Times. And I can put a link in the description below, but it's behind a paywall. So if you've exceeded your free article limit from the New York Times and you didn't subscribe to their stuff, well, you're just going to have to take a look at what I got in my email this morning and read it yourself if you really want to, if I missed anything or I skip over any parts. But he starts off the article saying, good morning. The U.S. media is offering a different picture of COVID-19 from science journals or the international media, a study finds. Good morning. Yeah, that's a nice way to start out an article, but I think we need to change what the actual title is, don't you? Let me give you my title. The U.S. media is offering a different picture of tobacco harm reduction, otherwise known as vaping, from scientific journals or international media. An ex-smoker finds. Yeah, let's get back to the article. Is bad news the only kind? Good question. Well, Bruce Satterdott, an economics professor at Dartmouth College, noticed something last year about COVID-19 television coverage that he was watching on CNN and PBS. It almost always seemed negative, regardless of what he was seeing in the data or hearing from scientists he knew. Yeah. The exact same thing can be said about tobacco harm reduction, otherwise known as nicotine vaping. You know, when a volley cases were rising in the U.S., the U.S. news coverage trumped on the whole opportunity to emphasize vaping caused injury and death of 68 teens and young adults. You know, when the cases were mysteriously disappearing, the coverage instead focused on those places where youth were illegally misusing vapes instead of warning readers that black market vitamin E acetate tainted THC carts killed these people. None of the deaths and hospitalizations were caused by nicotine vaping. And when tobacco harm research shows the vaping is more effective to quit smoking than nicotine replacement therapy, mainstream media ignored these findings. Big surprise, right? Kind of like how when New York Governor Andrew Cuomo said, Vaping is better than smoking. Technically, yes. But so what? But so what? 55 million ex-smokers vape every single day to stay away from deadly combustible tobacco. And none of them die from nicotine vaping. You know why? Because it's the 95, 97, 97.5%, and even 99% safer alternative to cigarettes. And there'll be links in the description below to all those statistics. But I digress. Let's get back to the article that way it was actually written. When COVID cases were rising in the U.S., the U.S. news coverage emphasized the increase. When cases were falling, the coverage instead focused on those places where cases were rising. And when vaccine research began showing positive results, the coverage downplayed it. As far as Saucer Dot could tell. Sound familiar? But he was not sure whether his perceptions were correct. To check, he began working with two other researchers building a database of COVID coverage from every major network. CNN, Fox News, Politico, The New York Times, and hundreds of other sources in the U.S. and overseas. 
The researchers then analyzed it with a social science technique that classifies language as positive, neutral, or negative. The results showed that saucer dot's instinct had been right, and not just because the pandemic has mostly been a grim story. The U.S. media is an outlier. Yeah, the coverage by U.S. publications with the national audience has been much, much more negative than coverage by any other source that the researchers analyzed, including scientific journals, major international publications, and regional U.S. media. The most well-read U.S. media are outliers in terms of their negativity, Molly Cook, a co-author of the study, told me. About 87% of the COVID coverage in the national U.S. media last year was negative. The share was 51% in international media, 53% in U.S. regional media, and 64% in scientific journals. Notably, the coverage was negative in both U.S. media outlets with liberal audiences like MSNBC and those with conservative audiences like Fox News. Yeah, Saucer Dote is careful to emphasize that he does not think the journalists usually report falsehoods. The issue is which facts they choose to emphasize. Still, the new study, which the National Bureau of Economic Research has published as a working paper titled, Why is All COVID-19 News Bad News? calls for some self-reflection from those of us in the media. If we're constantly telling negative story, we are not giving our audience the most accurate portrait of reality. We are shading it. We are doing a good job telling you why COVID cases are rising in some places and how the vaccines are imperfect, but not such a good job explaining why cases are falling elsewhere or how the vaccine saves lives. Perhaps most important, we are not being clear about which COVID developments are truly alarming. As Ron John Segal, another co-author told me, the media is painting a picture that is a little different from what the scientists say. Wow. That's exactly the same as how the media portrays tobacco harm reduction. You know, Let's finish the article the way it was published, and then I'll prove this same behavior in the media with tobacco harm reduction and how it's going to result in the deaths of 18,928 people in the U.S. and 320,000 people globally if they don't change. Why the bad news bias? The researchers say they are not sure what explains their findings, but they do have a leading contender. The U.S. media is giving the audience what they want. When the researchers examined which stories were the most read or the most shared on Facebook, they tended to be the most negative stories. I talked about that the other day. To put it another way, the stories that people chose to read skew even more negative than the stories that media organizations choose to publish. Human beings, particularly consumers of major media, like negativity in their stories, Sarsar Dot said. We think the major media was responding to consumer demand. Oh yeah? The idea is consistent with the patterns in the data, Saucer Dot added. It makes sense that national publications have better instincts about reaching a large audience than, say, scientific journals. And overseas, some of the most influential English language media organizations like the BBC have long received government funding, potentially making them less focused on consumer demand. All of that sounds plausible to me, but I don't think it's the full explanation. I have worked in media for nearly three decades, and I think you might be surprised by how little time journalists spend talking about audience size. We care about it, obviously, but most journalists I know care much more about other factors like doing work that has an impact. 
In the modern era of journalism dating roughly to the Vietnam War and Watergate, we tend to equate impact with asking tough questions and exposing problems. There are some good reasons for that. We are inundated by politicians, business executives, movie stars, and others trying to portray themselves in the best light. Our job is to cut through the self-promotion and find the truth. If we don't tell you the bad news, you may never hear it. Oh yeah? Sometimes though, our healthy skepticism can turn to reflexive cynicism and we end up telling something less than the complete story. I am grateful to Saucer Dot, Cook, and Seagal for doing to us journalists what we normally do to others, holding up a mirror to our work and giving us a chance to do better. Yeah? Well, I want the U.S. media to do better. I want all the journalists to do better. Because this one-sided reporting that's going out there that is constantly pushing the fear-mongering, it's ridiculous. And it's costing people their lives. When it comes to tobacco harm reduction, people need to know the truth. All of it. Not just the parts that you can take and make turn and twist into something that sounds scary. You want me to turn and twist things to make them sound scary? I'll be happy to do it for you. Okay. According to the World Health Organization, which some experts say is corrupted by multi-billion dollar interested parties, oops, there are 6.5 trillion cigarettes sold around the world every single year. That's 18 billion cigarettes every single day, smoked by approximately 1 billion smokers. Mm -hmm. Smoking kills up to half of its users as well as bystanders who have no choice but to breathe in combustible tobacco smoke. Burning tobacco results in 8 million deaths a year globally in the United States. Almost half a million deaths a year. That translates into 1,300 deaths every single day, according to the CDC. Matter of fact, the CDC says that over half of cigarette smokers who try to quit every year, half of them try to quit every single year. But according to the World Health Organization, only 4% of those who try to quit actually succeed in their quit attempt. Well, here's where I see the problem in the media, always portraying the worst possible situations. The latest study published in the Cochrane Library titled Electronic Cigarettes for Smoking Cessation found that nicotine vaping is more effective than all other cessation methods. So much so that an additional four out of 100 people would be successful in their quit attempt if they used vaping to quit smoking. You know, the World Health Organization said that only 4% of the people who try to quit succeed. Well, if vaping was promoted as the effective tobacco harm reduction tool that it is, and people used electronic cigarettes to quit smoking, well, that means the vaping could potentially double the number of people who are able to give up their deadly combustible tobacco habit. That additional four successful quitters per 100 would translate to 52 people every single day, 364 people a week, and 18,928 people per year living longer because U.S. national news agencies stopped their sensational fear-mongering negativity towards tobacco harm reduction. Oh, and they're not doing that? So you might say that the U.S. publications with a national audience are responsible for 18,928 smoking-related deaths in the U.S. every year. You know, that's horrible. Do you know what's even worse? Once they publish the, their scare stories about vaping, it isn't limited to the United States. These stories are seen all across the globe and other countries see what is happening in the United States and the fear permeates into their country. Well, that means that the number of tobacco related deaths globally is partly to blame of CNN, Fox News, the New York Times, MSNBC, CBS, ABC, NBC, and how many others? That is disastrous. No, you know what? That's cataclysmic. That's on a cataclysmic scale. One might even use the same math to determine that up to 876 deaths every single day 
are caused by negative, biased national news media. And if you look at the potential for lives saved per 100 on a global scale, that could easily equate to 320,000 lives saved every single year. Wouldn't that be an auspicious miracle if the cataclysmic situation we face today were changed? All we need is one journalist, one journalist with a little bit of integrity to turn off their reflexive cynicism regarding tobacco harm reduction products known as the electronic cigarette and they could make the impact of a century. With carefully crafted prose, they could single-handedly reverse the combustible tobacco trend and save countless souls. That's it for me. Have a great day.